How's it going, everybody? Cub fan here, and today we're hanging out in our slime farm, getting some slime balls and some XP. Uh, and today I wanted to do something a little bit different that we hadn't done before. Uh, we are going to build the villager uh, trading center, but I'm going to do most of that off screen. I'll show you guys a little bit of it, but mostly it's just okay. I'm going to place this block here, and then this one here, and then this. So I don't want to show too much of that because uh, it can get boring quickly but we'll get that going and I noticed the other day that I still do not have a beacon uh, we have two wither skeleton heads but we are lacking a third one to be able to fight the wither which is something I've wanted to do for a uh, quite a long time now um, so I think we're gonna do that as well so we'll go ahead and grab a fire resistance potion which I believe is here is there any in there right now? No. Hit that button and it starts to brew up. Alright. Fantastic. Um, let's see, what else do we have to do? Um, eventually here I'm going to put a uh, full auto brewer so we can mass brew potions, any potion in the game. Uh, the ones we have down here currently, these are the most commonly used potions, which I made individual stands for and they're made just for this purpose uh... we're going to the nether so we can get three extended uh... fire resistance potions uh... so that's why i made that and made this whole area actually uh... someone also suggested i put a water source here i think i'm going to do that eventually um, but it won't be here it'll be on the in the brewing stand upstairs and basically what i want to do is i want to be able to fill my inventory with say like a stack of uh, of dirt and then leave one spot for bottles and then when I fill it uh, the water bottles fall into a hopper which refills the water bottles both in the brewing station we'll put here and in the minecart chest that refills our uh, our potions down here so it'll be sort of like a two for one thing up there alright there's our fire resistance potion got some ender pearls and Mr. Slime's coming in here one to wreck our day good luck with that alright so we'll get rid of these guys here and then we'll head out to the nether alright let's start heading up here um, also guys some exciting news I'm going to Minecon 2013 in Orlando so if any of you are also going to Minecon let me know um, we can meet up I'll have more details when uh, the date comes closer but I already have everything pretty much booked out uh, so yeah it's gonna be a gonna be a great time uh, a lot of fun hopefully meet a lot of cool people and some of the Mojang development team, Dinnerboom, Jeb, Notch, uh, Grum, etc. So yeah, it'll be a good time. Alright, let's see here. Everything's looking good here. Uh, I want to go over, let's, uh, let's put some of our valuable stuff away here first. Put it in here. Uh, we don't need that. We'll keep that in case you run into some quartz. Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. We'll keep some of these on our hotbar. And we got a few arrows. And that'll have to do for now, I guess. Yeah, four arrows are going to have to do. We'll eat something before we go out here. So I need to gather some quartz. And I need to get a Wither Skeleton Skull. Um, eventually I'm hoping to have a Wither Skeleton Farm, but that might be a little ways off. Uh, so we'll make our way down to the fortress over here. I'm, uh, I'm not certain... There's, <laughs> there's a baby zombie pigman right there. Man, that's weird. His whole face is the color of the, the, the white part of their head. Wow, he makes weird noises too. Uh, I'm sort of wondering if they fixed the nether fortress bug yet. They said they did, but they didn't say what they fixed. And 
It does not look like any wither skeletons are spawning here. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the other fortress that's nearby. See any over there? No. No. Don't think they don't think they fixed it. Oh well. Uh, yes, yeah, so we'll have to go over to the other fortress and we'll see if there's any over there. Okay guys, we are back. Our base is over that way. You can just barely make out the nether fortress right there, maybe. You can see on the edge of the screen there. Uh, but there's another one over here. And I showed this quite a while back. I haven't been to this, this fortress in quite some time. Uh, but I did leave a torch trail that leads right to it. So we'll go into this one and see if Wither Skellies will spawn in this one. Uh, I'm more hopeful they'll spawn in this one because I think the fix was that Mojang put out is that uh, mobs, uh, fortress mobs will spawn in fortresses generated uh, before 1.6 if you hadn't visited them in 1.6.1. But it's not looking like that's the case here either, which is unfortunate. And quite honestly, it breaks a ton of builds. Uh, that's, yeah, that's a little upsetting. Um, and of course, the reason this broke is because chests generate in nether fortresses now. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a major downer. Darn it. Okay, everybody, so both of those fortresses were dead. Uh, they don't spawn any fortress mobs anymore. But we're going to go in search of one. Uh, so hopefully we're going to get a lot of quartz out of this. And also a skeleton skull and possibly horse armor. If we can find a uh, fortress with a chest in it. So I'm going to head off this way and see what we can find. Okay, everybody, check this out. Uh, I found another fortress, but it didn't have any any mobs in it. But check this out. This is like the mother of all gravel updates. I'm going to try and destroy this and see what... Well, not far enough out, apparently. Let's try here. hey oh, Look out. That was epic. Wow. Okay, everybody, so we weren't able to find any nether fortresses that had wither spawning in them. Um, I did find a lot of quartz, though, and that block is placed wrong. Uh, so I went ahead and made some blocks out of it and added some quartz to the entrance on this side and also on the, I think this is the southern side, eastern side, sorry. Uh, here and then a little bit more to the uh, northern side southern side this is the southern side okay so yeah I gotta go get some more quartz here to make this uh, nice and nice and uniform out here but it's now time to go back to the overworld and get working on this villager trading system also we got 46 levels uh, of experience from mining so we might as well go ahead and cash in on that I think I'm gonna go ahead and enchant another pick here so let me grab a few sticks make a diamond pickaxe and we'll go put some levels on that let me eat something here quick quickly okay Make our way over here. Make sure that this thing's maxed out. Put it in there. And, ooh, silk touch. Very nice. All right. That's good news there. Um, let's see. We'll also go ahead and make another one. And we'll, we'll go ahead and then boost our uh, XP level. A little bit here. That's good. So we'll go ahead and make another one. And I'm hoping for a nice work pick. So that means efficiency four and uh, an unbreaking three. And I only brought two diamonds out. Don't know why. There we go. Okie doke. 
All right, let's try again for another pick. Hopefully we get a work pick. That's what I'm sort of aiming for. Let's do this. This should be 22, I think. 20, close enough. Efficiency three, not too bad. But we can use that. That will work. All right, so we got that. Uh, let me go ahead and sleep through the night and we'll get started on this build. Okay, everybody, we are back and we've constructed a little bit of our villager trading center already. Um, you'll see here I've laid out uh, where each villager will go. Uh, the villagers will go on this block here, like this soul sand block. Uh, but this is where they'll be, the block in front of them will be. Uh, so you can kind of see how big it'll be. And then this will be the water stream leading down to uh, the fire pit, the lava pit, where the villagers will burn up. Um, so, how this thing works, if you haven't seen it before, uh, this is Tango Tech's design on the Villager uh, Trading Center. So, the water stream here brings villagers up from the breeder down there. Uh, so we have a constant supply of villagers. Then once the villagers make their way up uh, to the top of this water stream, uh, you can see this redstone mechanism here. This thing will then uh, start to work. And how it works... Uh, is that villagers come up this water stream and then they keep coming down this way until they hit a, uh, a hole with an open fence gate and then I don't know if you can see it here on the screen but there's a tripwire down there whenever a villager trips the tripwire uh, this piston here will retract which means the fence gate is retracted as well while the block below it has a sticky piston behind it and it pushes out uh, and that causes the water stream to continue on and that's how we get uh, only one villager in each slot so let me demonstrate that here come down here villagers are going they fall down you'll see the block above me has now closed and uh, the water stream now continues on uh, for another another cell um, while the villagers are in here they cannot get out because um, I have carpet here I believe Tango had half slabs, but uh, carpet works just as well because you can't you can't get by carpet. Um, and actually, we don't even need that piece of carpet there at all. We still can't get by uh, without that. Um, so the carpet will keep them all um, sort of encased in there so they can't escape. And whenever we're done trading with them, we can hit this button. That piston will retract temporarily, the villager will drop down, and I'll go into a water stream, which leads to the Pit of Doom over there. So that's how it's going to work. Uh, the rest of the uh, clip uh, of me building this will be a montage. It's just basically this exact same design here over and over again, uh, plus a little water trickery and things like that to keep the water streams flowing. But uh, other than that, uh, next time I am back, we will have a fully working villager trading center. So montage begin.
All right, everybody. So we went ahead and completed most of the uh, villager trading farm. We still have to add a, a roof of some type over this. But basically what happens here, um, I have a lever here which controls the fence gate all the way down here. Let me just jump down and show you that. There we go. So it controls controls that fence gate there. You'll see it's on now, so it's open. When you uh, flip the lever up, it closes it so they can't come up the water stream. But we got a good amount of villagers here, so we should see one uh, come up this tube pretty soon. Uh, as soon as they get into the water stream. Looks like this guy might be getting ready to go in. Maybe not. But the gate is open, so we should see a villager come up any minute now. Um, so we'll go up top, and we'll wait for that to happen. Okay, everybody, here comes a villager now up the water stream. Uh, we had a villager come up earlier, but he somehow got out of this, uh, this carpet area. Should stop jumping here. Sooner or later. Let's see, he's offering one emerald for... If you give him one emerald, he'll give you eight melon. I don't think so, buddy. I just want to see if he gets out of here, though. He should should be able to... Uh, should be stuck in there. But... We'll see here. Yeah, I think he's stuck there. Alright, guys. We got, looks like, a butcher coming up the water stream. And he should drop into the second stall here. This guy has not been able to escape from this carpet area here. Uh, there we go. So I think the carpet's carpet's okay. I can keep him trapped in there. He's offering uh, four emeralds for a leather tunic. I do not think so. So we'll drop him. He should fall into the water stream. And this guy also is not an ideal trade, so we'll get rid of him as well. In drops another one. And you sort of see how the process works. Uh, seven emeralds for a diamond helmet. Not what I'm looking for right now. They all get dropped into the water stream I made down below. You'll see them getting pushed over. And eventually they'll get pushed over uh, far enough to where uh, they will end up down in the lava pit. Which is over here at the end of that water stream. And yeah, that's where the water stream ends up and they fall down into lava and they are exterminated. So, uh, that's pretty much how this uh, villager trading system works. Let's see what we got here. You see that guy glitched out, but then he went back in. Huh. There's our first librarian. Yeah. Huh. So I think when they first initially fall and take damage, they can s sometimes glitch through this carpet. But we'll leave it for now and test it out. And if necessary, we'll replace this with half slabs. Uh, let's see what this librarian wants. Okay, that's a good good sign there. Because uh, we want the last trade for this guy to be a paper trade. So as long as we don't get paper, it's a good trade. Um, so yeah, I'll go get some uh, supplies. This guy we don't need. Uh, and it is modular. So, uh, any, so since I got rid of this guy, the next guy won't fall on the third one, he'll fall on the first one now. So it's modular like that, which is pretty cool. Alright, so, uh, these guys should be starting to get burned here, I believe, relatively soon. Uh, but this is critical that we have this lava uh, more than 16 blocks away, because if we didn't, then the villagers would stop breeding because anytime a player is within 16 blocks and a villager dies, then the player is blamed for that villager's death and the villagers stop breeding for uh, a couple minutes. So let's see, we'll come in here and get some books and make them written books. Need that. Uh, let's see here. Stone. And we need 
feathers. There we go. So I'll make a couple of written books here. Actually, quite a few written books. Maybe that that'd probably be good for now. Back out there. Alrighty. Looks like we got a butcher in here. Seven emeralds for a diamond shovel. Not too terrible. Alright, so. We'll go ahead and type. We'll just go ahead and do that. Trade him the book. There we go. Should get the particle effects, and he should open up the next trade after we trade a few books with him. Oh, and we got another one coming in. Alright, three emeralds for a bookshelf. We'll do that one as well. Three emeralds for a bookshelf. We'll do that. And we'll see if he gives us that. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. One book and 17 emeralds for a smite one book. That's kind of a ripoff, but it's good we have three trades already without paper. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's very good. So, we'll do that one. Let's see what this guy's offering. Five emeralds for an iron hoe. I don't think so. See ya, buddy. This guy could be useful later on. We'll keep him around for now. And there should be some more coming up soon. Uh, so let me go get some more materials, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went and got some emeralds here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some books in here. Paper. Uh, and then some of our emeralds. And these are the uh, emeralds we got from villager trading uh, pre 1.4 so let's see what he want again he wants a book and 17 emeralds so hopefully he won't be on this trade for long but we will see that, that. alright hopefully it only takes one of those trades because that can get pretty expensive alright glass next one don't mind if I do. This is looking really promising. Even though perfect villagers are rare, um, we could conceivably get it on the first, the first villager, the first uh, librarian we we see. Five looking better still. Awesome. And I think these librarians only have a total of nine trades. Um, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, six or so right now. And the sun's going down, so we better... Whoop, somebody else just dropped a priest. Come over here, sleep through the night. And we'll come back in the morning and see how they're doing. Uh, hey, all right. So we're up to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're up to seven trades with still no paper, which is exactly what we want. Hopefully this will continue for another two trades. This is amazing luck if, if we get this the first time. Just ridiculous luck. Aww. So yeah, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eighth trade is a paper trade. So yeah. Not a perfect villager, but still pretty decent. Um, 
We can trade a couple times with this guy to reclaim some of our emeralds. Um, but yeah, not a perfect villager. Very close though, especially for the first try. So we'll continue to work on that and also enclose it so that uh, mobs can't get to the villagers. Okay, everybody. So I finished the uh, interior part of the villager trading center. So this is what it looks like here. Uh, you can get a better look at it from straight on there. What was sort of a, uh, a crazy stair pattern here. Uh, and then the emeralds to signify that we can trade emeralds here. Uh, the redstone here on the outside, I went ahead and covered in the holes in the ground, but that's still there, so I'll probably encase that um, sometime in the near future. And it almost has sort of a desert temple-like feel, you know, with the big sides and the small part in the middle. Uh, looks like another villager is coming up there. That's a librarian. Uh, let's see here. So we got a full house now. Let's see if we have any good trades here. So that's decent. We have a cow farm, so that'll, that'll come in handy. So we'll keep that guy. That we don't want. Get rid of him. This guy we'll keep because we want to get a perfect librarian first. Uh, that one can also be good uh, once we get a chicken farm, our chicken farm back up. Chainmail, I'll keep that guy around. Not what we want there. Keep that guy. Definitely keep that guy. Keep that guy. Keep that guy. Keep the librarians. Alright. Eh, well. No, we don't want that one. Let's see, uh. That guy, we already have one of him. That guy will keep. This guy, see you later. Keep this guy. We'll try and trade a little bit with him. And that guy we're keeping for the diamond stuff. Okay, everybody, so we got the villager trading center up and running now. Pretty happy with the design. I really like the glass roof area too. Uh, and more of these villagers will continue to filter in, so we'll keep the best ones and get rid of the rest so now I think it's time to head down and see what today's highlighted channel is so we'll launch a pearl up somewhere land it on the roof and while we're up here we can actually see how many days have gone by in the game so let's see it's 128 and then that's what is that 77 so 128 plus 77 so a little over 200 days have passed in game since we made that clock. All right, so we'll head down here. Okay, everybody, down here in the mine shaft now. And for those of you who are new to the channel, um, I do uh, give shout-outs to people who comment on the video or provide helpful and or witty and or insightful comments. Um, so that's what this is. I dig each mine shaft uh, 150 blocks long and three blocks high. So that's 450 blocks in total at the minimum. And then whatever ores are visible in the mine shaft are the ones I dig out. So today's highlighted channel is Don Raimondo. First of all, awesome name. And second of all, uh, a little bit about his channel. He uh, doesn't have any videos up currently. But he does uh, support a lot of people in the Minecraft community. Uh, I've seen on his channel that he uh, likes a lot of videos from uh, my channel, from people like Doc M, uh, Captain Sparkles, and a lot of people in the Minecraft community. So thank you, Don Raimondo. This is your mind shaft. Let's see how you do against the other competitors. All right, everybody, just finished digging out Don Raimondo's mine shaft, and we did get 11 diamonds, and the other resources combined with those 11 diamonds uh, equal up to a total of 1,920 points. So I'll take the minecart ride back here, change the signs, and I'll be back. 
Okay, everybody, so I went ahead and changed all the leaderboards. Don Ramondo today coming in fourth place on the points leaderboard, and he's tied for second place with funny video on the uh, diamond leaderboard. Uh, so, guys, very excited about the future. Uh, hoping to get the perfect villager relatively soon. And also in November, Minecon 2012. I'm definitely going to that. I will try to see if I can get uh, like some video and share it with you guys. I'll definitely have a ton of pictures to share with you. Uh, so that will be really fun. Let me know if you guys are going. Uh, and hopefully I'll see some of you there. But this is going to be all for this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Cup Fan. Goodbye.